1-800-257-1257. That's 1-800-257-1257. Or send 1995 plus 495 shipping to Wonder Ride, P.O. Box 8250, Atlanta, Georgia, 30306. Sorry, no COD orders. This is CNN. Be back right here in 30 minutes. Before politics, Beverly Shook in New York with the latest on the business news. Lou, Cheryl, a lot of buying and selling, and finally the buyers won out today by a narrow margin. Concerns about the economy and the election kept stocks in a narrow range for most of the day. By the closing bell, the Dow Jones Industrial Average had gained almost nine points to close at 33.39. Trading volume was heavy, 186 million shares traded today. On the broader and secondary markets, only the over-the-counter market lost ground. Long-term interest rates slightly lower today. The yield on the Treasury's 30-year benchmark bond down to 7.61%. And on the shorter end, rates fell sharply at the Treasury's weekly auction. Yields on three-month bills fell to their lowest level in 20 years, and six-month bill bills at the lowest rate in 29 years. General Motors and Ford reporting impressive sales for the final days of June. Sales at GM shot up more than 18%, and Ford sales up more than 30%. Chrysler no longer reports 10-day auto sales. And that is the latest in business news. I'm Beverly Shook at the New York Stock Exchange. Stay tuned now. Inside Politics is next. It's nice, and it's, 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 uh, it's flattering. Bill Clinton finds a flattering convention role for Mario Cuomo, but he keeps running from questions about his running mate. And questions surface about Ross Perot's vacation home and damage to the environment while the Perot camp markets its message via video. It's all part of Inside Politics 92. <laughs> This is Inside Politics 92 with Catherine Cryer at the CNN Center in Atlanta and Bernard Shaw in Washington. Thanks for joining us. Some might call it the political equivalent of trying to figure out where to seat an eccentric aunt at your wedding. Bill Clinton needed to find the proper way to pay tribute to Mario Cuomo at next week's Democratic National Convention and foster their newfound friendship. So Clinton has tapped the New York governor to nominate him for president. Here's CNN national political correspondent, Gene Randall. Still refusing to say anything public about a potential running mate, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton did oversee one mystery cleared up Monday, a convention role for New York Governor Mario Cuomo. After earlier saying he didn't want a major part in next week's party gathering, Cuomo has now accepted one of the biggest, agreeing to formally nominate Clinton at Madison Square Garden apparently acquiescing to the wishes of Democratic Party Chairman Ron Brown. He said, but I still think it would be good for the party if you spoke. And um, in the end, I, I deferred to his judgment of mine. Still outside a comfortable convention fold at this point, though he is scheduled to speak, former presidential candidate Jesse Jackson, who's often been at odds with Clinton over the primary season, and former California Governor Jerry Brown who has attacked the Democratic Party platform as, quote, gooey, imprecise language. Meanwhile, as Mario Cuomo was joining the Clinton convention lineup, another governor was in Little Rock on Monday on a far different mission. Republican William Weld of Massachusetts, a George Bush surrogate on the attack. His major focus, the environment. Arkansas ranks 43rd in per capita spending on air pollution, 42nd of the 50 states in per capita toxic chemicals, released to the air by industry, and 41st in per capita ozone-depleting chemical emissions. Weld also hit Clinton on taxes and spending, trying to tie him to Democrat Michael Dukakis's much-derided Massachusetts miracle of 1988. Among those who listened to Weld, Clinton Press Secretary Dee Dee Myers and campaign advisor Betsy Wright. The news conference over, they called Weld's language vintage Republican politics, a sign of Bush re-election desperation. And Wright made it plain the Clinton camp has its own attack machinery ready. I mean, he really is embroiled in a serious ethics scandal right now where members of his administration's access has been sold in exchange for Republican Party money. And I would be embarrassed to go into a place like Arkansas with that kind of a scandal swirling around him. 
A Clinton campaign press release also accused Weld of having personal ethics and conflict of interest problems. His Little Rock vacation over, Bill Clinton is set for a speech in Washington on Tuesday to the National Education Association, which plans to endorse him for president. But the big story is Clinton's search for a vice presidential running mate. It is widely expected he'll announce his decision sometime this week. He could also schedule talks with the major contenders while he's in Washington. Talks aimed at helping him make up his mind. Gene Randall, CNN, Little Rock. And on that last note, if Clinton does meet with any of the contenders on his short list, he could very well be sitting down with Lee Hamilton of Indiana, who's thought to be near the top. But over the weekend, Hamilton staked out positions on family leave and abortion that differ from those of Clinton. Our congressional correspondent, Bob Franken, with reaction. Uh, the VP sweepstakes question is, did Lee Hamilton hurt his chances with his weekend television appearance? Okay. I think it is perfectly appropriate to put some restraint on a woman seeking an abortion. Hamilton has been considered a front runner in the speculation about Governor Clinton's vice presidential choice. Abortion rights leaders declined interviews, but privately expressed concern after Hamilton said that his abortion record was exactly where most Americans were. I must concede to you, he continued, I have some ambivalence about it. Governor Clinton is refusing to provide any clues, so the experts say it's hard to tell whether Hamilton hurt his chances. My feeling is that abortion rights supporters are going to say, look, we'll go with Clinton, and even if he doesn't pick our first choice, we can live with that. Clinton is our guy, and we don't want to make trouble. The current thinking is that Governor Clinton is trying to reestablish relations with the Democratic establishment by seeking a member of Congress as his choice. Among those on his so-called short list, Pennsylvania Senator Harris Wofford, who also has a mixed record on abortion. Tennessee Senator Albert Gore, named by some guessers as the number one frontrunner. He's a co-sponsor of the Freedom of Choice Act, which is the focus right now of the abortion rights movement. West Virginia Senator Jay Rockefeller is also a co-sponsor. Rockefeller just happened to be the subject of an item in the Monday Washington Post's personalities column, which concentrated on his support of Clinton. Those under consideration have the delicate job of going public just enough to keep their names out front without hurting their chances. This is ultimately the decision of Governor Clinton, and unexpected factors like Hamilton's weekend comments could have unexpected results. Bob Franken, CNN, Capitol Hill. Ross Perot is set to hold a brainstorming session tomorrow in Texas. Aides say the strategy gathering will cover a combination of things from ideas on major issues to VP suggestions. Meantime, the tycoon from Texas has turned to videotape in a bid to keep control of his public image. CNN's Tony Clark reports on the medium and the message. Up to now, Ross Perot has been defining himself through rally speeches. I said, certainly, if you want me to. Television interviews and occasional news conferences. And he makes it clear he wants to be the one who explains who Ross Perot is. There has been a 90-day effort to redefine my personality by a group called Opposition Research and Republican Party. Uh, they're generally known as the Dirty Tricks crowd. When the time came to declare our independence... Now, in what may be the forerunner of his expected television advertising blitz, the pro campaign is putting out a videotape that depicts the Texan as a leader along the lines of Washington, Jefferson, Lincoln, and Franklin Roosevelt. It is time for change. Time for a new leader to step forward. Time for Ross Perot. Crime. Drug abuse. The 12-minute tape authorized and paid for by the petition committee, shows Perot as a supporter of the military, a hero to his employees, a leader in education reform, and a maverick who took on General Motors. Perot was bought out after suggesting they trim the fat. His criticism fell on deaf ears. Now, his views are being heard and well-received by people across the country. The video, which is being sold at volunteer gatherings and through an 800 phone number, uses clips from Perot's speeches to touch on familiar campaign themes. The federal deficit, a faltering education system, the loss of jobs and industries to other countries. And the tape lays out some of Perot's proposals. Give the president a line item veto. Forbid the government from exempting itself from the laws it imposes on citizens. 
require all political candidates to turn in any excess campaign funds. The video was produced by a Texas company. Before Perot brought veteran Reagan ad man Hal Riney on board, yet the tape gives a clear signal of the image Perot wants projected, an image that he's a man of action, not talk. He's America's problem, and will do something about them. Tony Clark, CNN, Dallas. The parole camp dismisses this next story as a, quote, minor incident. Time magazine says the billionaire's desire to dock his yacht closer to his vacation home in Bermuda prompted a construction crew working for him to blow up part of a coral reef without first getting a permit. According to a parole spokesman, the tycoon wasn't on the island. It was all up to the contractor. But Time quotes a construction expert as saying parole was at the scene and even put on snorkel gear to watch the underwater explosion. Another published report says Perot tried unsuccessfully to talk the Reagan White House into softening its policy on Vietnam back in 1987. According to the New York Times, Perot said making good faith overtures to Hanoi might help lead to the release of long missing American prisoners of war. In a related development, U.S. News and World Report says Vietnam offered to free U.S. POWs in exchange for billions of dollars in American aid shortly after Ronald Reagan took office in 1981. The source of this report, Congressional Insiders, quoting secret testimony last week by a Reagan administration official to the Senate Select Committee on POW and MIA Affairs. In Munich, incumbent George Bush is trying to put an election year spin on the current economic summit. With U.S. unemployment at an eight-year high, the president says his talks with the other G7 leaders will mean more jobs for Americans. And for weeks, Bill Clinton has been talking, but are people finally starting to listen? Coming up next on Inside Politics 92, we'll ask Clinton Press Secretary Didi Myers if the message is getting through. And later in this half hour, the final touches for a monumental task. New York sets the stage for the Democratic Convention. Welcome to Hotel Views, the family getaway, Holiday Inn, Nora Mata. Bob? Susan, you simple-minded sap. When I go away, I stay at Holiday. I go to the same room, the same restaurant, the same pool with the same wife and kids. Why change? Bob, you hangnail. Ramada has comfortable rooms, nice restaurants and pools, just like Holiday. But at Ramada, kids, including teens, always stay free. See, change is good. Don't you ever change anything, like your socks? There's no argument. Ramada's in, Holiday's out. What if we could make all the clean air and water we need? What if there was enough food for everyone? What if we understood the aging process? What if we cared so much about education we made the most of every moment? What if research in space made life better on Earth? We're helping to build Space Station Freedom, the next step in space exploration, and a new way to look at the home planet. The medical facts are clear. Tylenol is so gentle on your stomach, doctors even recommend it to their ulcer patients for everyday aches and pains. They know Tylenol can't aggravate an ulcer the same way aspirin can. That's important for all of us to know. And so is this. Hospitals use Tylenol 23 times more than all aspirin brands combined. Tylenol, the pain reliever hospitals use most. In this unpredictable election year, the Democratic Convention is an event to watch. CNN will be there with news, analysis, and live reports. Convention coverage that goes beyond gavel to gavel begins July 13th on CNN. Just about a month ago, Bill Clinton had locked up the Democratic presidential nomination and was doing his darndest to try to get the masses and the media to listen to his message. But more often than not, Clinton was drowned out by the hoopla over Ross Perot. In fact, President Bush barely bothered to mention his Democratic rival during a primetime news conference. That night, Larry King asked Clinton about his increasingly invisible candidacy. Don't you but count it, it odd so that you good. aren't mentioned by the press in questioning, the president rarely by name, that Perot was, was the story? Don't you count that odd, Bill? Well, I, it, it may be odd. Folks like you have been uh, 
pumping him up uh, with no program, but with things that sound good. So it's just one of these things that's going along fine as far as I'm concerned. Well, with just a week to go before the Democratic National Convention, is the Clinton camp having any better success with the message thing? Well, let's ask the governor's campaign point woman. Press Secretary Dee Dee Myers joins us from Little Rock. Dee Dee, the, the question on everyone's mind before we get to that is the vice presidency. <laughs> Who's up there? What's the scoop? Well, I think Governor Clinton's been uh, very consistent in that and not playing the name game or mentioning names. He's going about the process now. Uh, in a very systematic way. He's made it clear what his priorities are. He wants somebody who, first and foremost, would be a good president. So I think he's going to try to keep speculation to a minimum, although with only a week to go before the convention, that's a little tough to do. But uh, we're not going to get into the name game today. Well, obviously, there are a lot of leaks, but all of those leaks are white males. Um, any, any surprise in, in store? No minorities, no women being considered? Well, again, I mean, we're not going to play the name game. There's uh, a lot of people out there batting names about and trying to get some kind of a leg up. I'm a little surprised by just how intense competition is to get this story, but Governor Clinton has really tried to keep speculation to a minimum. He hasn't confirmed or denied that anybody's on the list. Um, I think you'll just have to wait and see. How about a very uh, passive question, and that is simply, when? When do we find when? out? That's being entirely driven by Governor Clinton's decision. I think Warren Christopher, who's heading the VP search, gave him very good advice early on in the process. He said, don't let any timetable or media sort of timetable drive this decision. Don't let tactics drive it. Make it when you're comfortable. Make it when you feel like you're ready. And I think he's taken that advice to heart. And I think he'll, uh, as soon as he's ready, he'll make an announcement and we'll let everybody know. Well, uh, many say that, that you are trying to create a high combustion convention. <laughs> and some are saying that, that he will await, uh, say, Tuesday of the convention to, to bring about more interest. Might, might this be a tactic? Well, I think there's a lot of speculation about tactics, but again, it's going to be driven by his decision when he's ready to announce it. It's not the kind of thing you can keep, so as soon as he's made a decision, I think we'll try to announce it. Um, it could happen any time between Wednesday of this week and Tuesday of next week or Wednesday of next week, depending on when he makes that decision. Um, there's just no way of telling at this point. All right, then other than the announcement of a, of a running mate, what about other events or, or um, activities to make this the high combustion convention? Well, I think a couple of things. First of all, we're trying to relate Governor Clinton's message directly to people by using video and high technology, um, by bringing people at remote sites around the country into the convention, and by trying to relate the specific proposals of his plan uh, directly to people. Rather than having a lot of politicians just talking about what Clinton will do to change the country, having people out there talking about how they think it'll change their lives. I think that's very important. It hasn't been done before. I think today's announcement that Governor Cuomo is going to put Governor Clinton's name and nomination on Wednesday night is big news for us. I think he's certainly one of the most respected Democrats in the country, one of the most eloquent. Uh, we look forward to that speech. I think there's just going to be a lot of excitement around the entire convention. I think it's going to be more accessible. I think it's going to be interesting. Why? I think we're going to have the party's finest there. You, you mentioned uh, uh, New York Governor Mario Cuomo. He's going to place the name uh -huh. and nomination. Why has it taken so long for the Democratic leadership to rally around Bill Clinton? Oh, I don't think it has. We've well, had we're literally at the convention before someone of the stature of Mario Cuomo has come out and done this sort of thing, and you've got um, uh, candidates that were running with him in the primaries that have yet to endorse him. Well, I think that there's been, we've enjoyed good support across the country in this. I think Governor Cuomo always, you know, he makes his own timetables and makes his own decisions. Uh, we're just thrilled that he's decided to put Governor Clinton's name in nomination, that he's accepted that offer from Governor Clinton. Um, I think that all of the Democratic leadership is now rallying around this candidacy. It's been a tough primary season, there's no question about it. Uh, there were a lot of good candidates in the race. Uh, I think the fact that Perot's in and it's a three-way race is sort of, you know, all bets have been off in terms of conventional wisdom. Well, but me, I think that... Let me ask you about, ahead. Let me ask you about the numbers. Um, uh, apparently, uh, Governor Clinton's numbers are, are turning up and, and uh, looking better. Why? Why the improvement now? I think because he's the only candidate out there who's consistently talked about the issues. One thing that Governor Clinton has believed throughout this campaign is that if he could just turn the election back to people and make it about issues that they care about, their jobs, schools, their children, their health care, uh, that he would do well. And we've done that in the last month. It's been our strategy since the end of the primary season to reintroduce Governor Clinton to the American people, to talk about um, his new economic strategy to put people first, to invest in our people. And I think that's really paid off. How long do you, you, know, know, we were, how long do you think we that's going to last, though? Because uh, the character issue, you, you may want it to, to be put to rest, but do you expect the Republicans will bring that back out? Oh, I don't think the Republicans will stop at anything to win this race. George Bush has said he'll do anything to win. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a very tough race. The only way George Bush can win is if he destroys both of his opponents. If, if this is a debate about the economics, the 
people's unemployment, about health care, who best to improve education in this country, George Bush won't win. Bill Clinton will. So little, they're going to do everything they can to make it about something other than the real issues. A little preview of, of Governor Clinton's speech uh, to the convention. We hear he's going to come out as, quote, a new Democrat. What does that mean? Well, I think throughout this campaign, he's tried to move the Democratic Party in a new direction, a third way, he calls it. Um, it's not, it's sort of abandoning the orthodoxy of the Democratic Party in some respects and, and moving away from the orthodoxies of the Republican Party, things like moving from welfare to work, um, looking to business to help create jobs, but also uh, requiring more responsibility from them. So it's opportunity and responsibility. It's the ability to move forward and throw out the old solutions and to try new ones. And I think that that's what this convention is going to be about, reintroducing Clinton, the man, to the American people telling his story, which is very compelling, about how he grew up in Arkansas. His father died before he was born. He grew up in a family of modest means and had to struggle to get into the middle class and to get a good education and to came back to Arkansas to fight for people here. So that's what the convention is going to be about. It's going to be about the compelling story of Bill Clinton and about his plan to put this country back on track, to reinvest in our people. All right. We'll look forward to events at the Democratic Convention. And Governor Clinton's press secretary, Dee Dee Myers, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Bernie? Thank you, Catherine. Coming up next on Inside Politics, New York City spends big bucks on a facelift for Midtown Manhattan. AT&T is constantly searching for new ways to help our customers save money on long distance. Forecasts, look at profiles, we do comparisons. And what we've recently discovered is remarkably simple. You just bought the airline tickets, so... Uh... Uh, Those AT&T customers who spend over $11 a month on long distance could start saving right away Hi, by signing up for one of the AT&T Reach Out America plans. If you spend over $11 a month on AT&T long distance, you could save too. All it takes is one call to 1-800-533-7600. AT&T, this is Terry. How can I help you? Hi, Terry. I was wondering if you could help us save some money on our long distance calls. This is about people. We have to put ourselves in the customer's place. Why don't you tell me a little about the way you use long distance? Well, we make long distance calls all day long. You'll learn how you could save 24 hours a day. 25% on AT&T calls made after 5 p.m. 25% is a pretty good chunk. And on some plans, enjoy a daytime discount, too. I guess you can say we're pretty good customers. Who are you talking to? Here, would you mind repeating that? Not at all. Reach Out America makes saving money simple by helping you save when you call without changing the way you, you call. You want to be able to call your relatives, your loved ones, and not think how much it's going to cost you. You can save 24 hours a day. There's a 25% discount in the evenings and a daytime discount as well. My husband has a sister in Madrid that he calls sometimes. That's perfect. We offer a discount on calls all over the world. What about AT&T calling cards? We each have one. No problem. You can save on calls wherever you are. If you spend over $11 a month on long distance, AT&T can help you save as much as 25% after 5 p.m. So call us now at 1-800-533-7600. Good enough for me. Thank you for calling AT&T. Honey, that sounded pretty good. Why don't we sign up? We just did. Great. Who do we call? Call AT&T and find out how one of the Reach Out America plans could help you save. a New York Minute around Madison Square Garden these days and you're likely to see an unusual sight. The streets being cleared of everything from potholes to prostitutes to pickpockets. New York is preparing to be invaded by 40,000 Democrats and journalists and the city is trying to put the shine back on the apple. In New York, CNN's Brian Jenkins. The really big decisions of the Democratic Party will be hammered out next week inside Madison Square Garden but outside the convention hall, there are a million and one details to attend to. Television cables to connect, posters to put up, walls to paint. At the N.G. Slater Company in Manhattan, workers are punching out some 50,000 campaign buttons for the Democrats' wing-ding. And at the Hilton Hotel, Alberto Reyes, an ice sculptor from the Philippines, is putting the finishing touches on his styrofoam replicas 
of the White House, the Washington Monument, and the U.S. Capitol. It took him seven weeks working on and off to complete the scale models of buildings he's only read about in books. I know that's very important to American people, these kind of things, this uh, landmark. Showing off its own landmarks during the convention will be important for New York City's pride and pocketbook. The city government expects to shell out some $20 million in all for construction and sprucing up and police overtime, but city officials say businesses here will bring in five to ten times that amount in extra earnings over the next two weeks. Hi, Joe. My name is Heather from New York 92, support group for the Democratic Convention. To help in the Herculean task of hosting the convention, Organizers have enlisted some 7,000 volunteers, including hundreds of drivers. They'll be have access to some celebrities, uh, parties, um, and just seeing the inner workings of the convention, which most people consider once in a lifetime. Few volunteers will find themselves inside the convention, but none seem to care. And I'm proud of the city, and I want people that come to the convention to have a good time while they're here. And if I can give a little bit, I'll do it. One lady offered to do a bit. A friend of hers had written a poem that she wanted to read at the convention. And also, she was a tap dancer, so she wanted to read the poem while tap dancing at the convention. I mean, this is, this is New York, man. And next week, the Democratic delegates will get an eyeful of it all. Brian Jenkins, CNN, New York. Oh, what people do to clean tough stains under the rim. Because for some bowl cleaners, that's a real stretch. Try a different angle. The angle neck of Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner. It easily goes under the rim and wipes out stains and germs. Don't get bent out of shape. Get Lysol Toilet Bowl Cleaner, the heavyweight with a powerful angle on cleaning. On the surface, it's a perfect neighborhood. But beneath the surface, there could be trouble brewing in the septic system. Ask anyone who's had a backup. Better to maintain your system. That includes Ridex once a month. Ridex helps keep your system free-flowing. And regular maintenance, including Ridex, helps prevent backup. Look beneath the surface. Use Ridex once a month. When my Raymond gets constipated, uh -oh. I give him Phillips milk of magnesia. Phillips is the only one that suits that stomach acidy feeling Ray sometimes gets. Maureen, put that away. Only Phillips soothes your upset stomach, then relieves constipation overnight. I think we should throw a party. I know what you'd serve. It's not easy to pull yourself away, pull yourself away, pull yourself away from a bowl of Kellogg's Raisin Bran. Flight 421, you're cleared for takeoff. Do you read? Those two scoops of raisins taste so good, you'll find that once you start to can Here's an opportunity to receive a free copy of William F. Buckley's controversial essay, In Search of Anti-Semitism. I want to share something with you that's very important and especially enjoyable to me. It's Bill Buckley's National Review. When you get National Review, you'll find it's informative, probing, challenging, and very entertaining. It's not on many newsstands, so this may be your only chance to get a trial subscription. For a trial subscription to National Review, call 1-800-257-1257. Tomorrow on Inside Politics 92, the incumbent abroad will examine the politics of international diplomacy and its implications for the current presidential race. Well, that's all for this edition of Inside Politics 92. I'm Catherine Cryer in Atlanta. I'm Bernard Shaw in Washington. Thanks for watching. Cheryl Atkinson has a preview of what's coming up next on CNN. Bernie, just ahead, we'll show you how the shuttle astronauts are making history with every minute they spend in orbit. Then, as Britain reduces its military, is it also trimming tradition? We'll have a report. And from the medical charts to the music charts, coming up a case where MD stands for music doctor, that and much more, next on Early Prime. Coming up, Early Prime continues, followed by Showbiz Today, after a word from your local cable systems, next on CNN. Do you realize just how much difference there is in life insurance rates from one insurance company to the next? For instance, 
If you're in good health and don't smoke cigarettes, Garden State Life Insurance may be able to save you as much as 50% off the cost of your life insurance. That's right, 30, 40, 50% off what you'd have to pay for a comparable amount of coverage elsewhere. And not just this month, but year after year for the rest of your life. Savings like that are well worth looking into. So if you need $100,000 to a $1 million dollars or more of quality term life insurance, you owe it to yourself to get the facts fast by calling now, 800-257-1257, toll free for this free information package, including a personal coverage proposal that shows you just how much your savings might be. There's no obligation, no sales pressure, and it could be a real eye-opener. For instance, as your Garden State Life representative can tell you, if you're a healthy 40-year-old who doesn't smoke cigarettes, you may qualify for $100,000 worth of quality term life insurance at rates so low they're less than 55 cents a day. How do we do it? First, you save because we offer this life insurance at these low rates only to people who are in good health. That cuts our risk and your premiums. Then, because this quality term life insurance is sold in amounts of at least $100,000 or more, you get the advantage of volume discounts. And it's easy to do business with Garden State Life Insurance because you deal with us directly. You're always just a phone call away. So call today, 800-257-1257, toll free, 257-1257 for your free personal coverage proposal. No obligation, no pressure. Discover how this quality term life insurance could save you as much as 50% off your premiums every year for the rest of your life. 800-257-1257, toll free. Call Garden State Life Insurance for your free information today, 257-1257. This is CNN. The Economic Summit faced protests at their doorstep and a war next door. Britain pays the piper. And five Scottish army units pay the price. Also, outward bound for adventure, bush pilots in Canada's rugged north retrace a dangerous journey. Early Prime continues. I'm Cheryl Atkinson. I'm Lou Waters. Hello. Among the other stories ahead, how an eye in the sky is changing the environmental outlook, outlook on Earth. And a cardiologist who is making a career of singing about broken hearts. Here's what's happening. Echoes from the war raging in what used to be Yugoslavia are drowning out the agenda at the economic summit in Munich. The United States is backing a plan to use U.N. military force if it's needed to get humanitarian aid to the besieged residents of Bosnia and Herzegovina. A senior U.S. official suggests using naval and air power to keep Serbian troops from blocking the relief effort. The leaders of the so-called G7 nations meeting in Munich are expected to approve that declaration. In an interview with CNN, Canadian Prime Minister Brian Mulroney said the G7 needs to take action. You have the seven leading industrialized nations of the world uh, sitting around a table here whose economies represent some 63 percent of the entire wealth of the world the entire economic influence of the world uh, sitting here uh, within striking distance of Sarajevo uh, and uh, with all of the accumulated influence uh, at the United Nations and elsewhere and not being able to come up with a a direct series of political signals that would help defuse and ultimately resolve this matter is quite inconceivable. Now just outside the summit site, angry protesters clashed with police today. Nearly 400 people were arrested when the mostly leftist demonstrators tried to disrupt the arrival ceremonies at the G7 meeting this morning. The saber rattling at the economic summit isn't quieting the fighting in Bosnia. The heavy artillery surrounding the capital of Sarajevo roared to life for the first time in days. Street fighting raged between Serbian units and the city's mostly Muslim defenders. The continued fighting threatens the distribution of relief supplies ferried in by an international airlift. In the Serbian capital, demonstrations against the government and the Republic's president continue. Protesters held a candlelight vigil overnight to protest Serbia's role in the conflict. The wife of French President Francois Mitterrand narrowly escaped death today in a car bomb attack in Iraqi Kurdistan. United Nations officials say at least four people died in the explosion. Danielle Mitterrand and a senior French minister had just passed a road block near the town of Hawana when the explosion happened. Witnesses say the flames and pieces of metal were scattered over a 50-yard radius. 
Many in Iraq were angered by Mrs. Mitterrand's visit to Kurdistan. She is a longtime campaigner for the rights of Iraq's Kurdish minority. French officials have stopped talking tough and started taking action against striking truck drivers. French riot police moved in to move out trucks blocking key French highways throughout the country. It took police just two hours to clear a barricade near Lille that had clogged the main motorway between Paris and the north. The drivers are locked in a battle with the government over new driving regulations. Authorities in France say two men who served in the Vichy government during World War II have been charged with crimes against humanity for prosecuting Jews. Judicial authorities identify those men as the head of the national police under the Nazis and the top police officer in Bordeaux at the time. The charges come amid questions about whether France is willing to confront those who collaborated with the Nazis. In April, a court dismissed a case against a former militia chief, Paul Trouvé. That ruling is being appealed. In Britain, some proud men in plaid are grudgingly preparing to stand down. Like many countries, the UK is cutting back its military now that the Cold War is over. CNN's Richard Blystone reports some units rich in tradition are among those who ranks, whose ranks will be thinned. For centuries, the men in skirts have scared the pants off Britain's enemies. Now, over the next two years, nearly 2,000 will drop from the ranks, casualties of the Cold War's end. Britain is cutting tens of thousands of soldiers because of the rising cost of arms and the reduced threat from the east. And five proud Scottish units, like the Royal Scots here, are to be suspended or amalgamated and lose identities and traditions won with valor and blood. Serving military men must be silent, but a group of civilians and retired soldiers is speaking out for them. We know they're very angry. These people go away for very long periods of time, uh, risk their, their, their lives daily on the streets of Belfast. They come back from these trouble spots and they get uh, told that they're going to be out of a job. But the new defense minister, a Scot himself, says the cuts are justified and will go ahead. Like the one o'clock shot fired daily from Edinburgh Castle, Scottish military traditions carry. For soldiers, fighting for Britain's interests has meant adventure, opportunity, escape from Highland poverty. And culture, family, and the crofts and villages of home bind Scottish units all the tighter. Foes of the cuts argue Britain will be unable to handle both present commitments and post-Cold War emergencies like Yugoslavia, and it'll be harder to build up again at need. When that thread of continuity is broken, uh, you'll find it very much harder to get people to join uh, up in the army and go to another regiment, because they won't have this feeling that they're going to what has been home to many of their family, many of their ancestors, for such a long time. Another gripe, an English-oriented government cutting more Scottish units than English. Yet another example of how Westminster rules without regard to the feelings of the people of Scotland. Two centuries ago, after disbanding a warrior society, the powers that were forced Highlanders out of their small farms so that rich lowlanders could raise sheep. It was another century before they learned the downside of offending the Scots. And finally, when agents of the Crown came back to the Glens, wanting Highland recruits for Britain's war against Russia, they could raise barely a handful. The Klansmen told them, since you have preferred sheep to men, let sheep defend you. Richard Blystone, CNN, Scotland. Big Brother could be watching. Coming up, an eye in the sky that looks more like science fiction than science fact. And Columbia's astronauts keep going and going right into NASA's record books. Stay with us as Early Prime continues. Making life a little sweeter. What could be cooler than ice cream with all the taste of a Milky Way bar? Making life a little sweeter. sweeter. Milky Way. Since the dawn of time, man has studied the face of the beast. Now you can witness nature as never before. 
Life Magazine and WNET present the world's premier wildlife cinematographers who ventured into the jungles, traversed the Arctic wastelands, and explored beneath the seas to produce the best wildlife footage ever seen. These are breathtaking images, the choice moments from one of the most highly acclaimed nature documentaries in the history of television. Life Magazine proudly presents one of the finest wild...